Thank you for choosing the SNL Fan Podcast, and I'm your host, just some guy named Jay. And in this installment of the SNL Fan Podcast, what we want to do is, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rank uh, every cast member, not every cast member, but every cast member from the previous season, the uh, the 2012-2013 season of uh, of SNL, uh, from from the worst to first. <laughs> From uh, you know the 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 least uh, my least well the cat I'm gonna say my least favorite but in my opinion the cast member that performed the worst all the way to the cast member that performed the best you know uh, excluding Seth Meyers of course because you know he only does Weekend Update um, but before I do that I just want to say uh, you know I'm gonna definitely keep the SNL fan podcast going uh, all the way up until the premiere of uh, the 2013-2014 season. And then I'm, you know, and then I'm going to keep it going with the SNL reviews and things, just like last season. So definitely keep coming back for more updates. And before I even get into the podcast, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to ACM Records. ACM Records is a large independent record label with uh, with with plenty of, of of talented recording artists signed to the label. Um, they have music from all genres: uh, hip hop, rock, gospel, R and B. You know, they they have a wide range of artists. Um, definitely check out the music. They don't put out any bull crap. Everything that they come out with, uh, every artist on the label is just very talented, and 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 I stand behind their music 100%. Um, I'm going to put the link in the information box below to the promotional blog, the ACM Records promotional blog, and I'm going to put a link to the official uh, ACM Records website too, so you can check out all the, the the artists and things like that. The ACM Records blog pretty much has the uh, you know pretty much has news and updates, whereas the uh, the ACM Records uh, website has you know links to all the individual artists and things like that and they just have they have something for everybody on there so definitely check out it, it, you can't really pick out one artist you know they're all great um i definitely recommend you listening to their music all right now let me get into this podcast all right it's 13 of them uh excluding uh, seth myers so let me start at the number 13 spot tim robinson Tim Robinson. Okay, also too, uh, as I say these, you can also feel free to post your comments, and if you disagree with me, uh, you know, let me know. But uh, at number thirteen, I feel like Tim Robinson. He was the the you know the least. Uh, he was the cast member that that impressed me the least. Um, he kind of his first episode, the Seth on the Seth MacFarlane one. He seems pretty. He seemed pretty good. Um, and I was looking forward to seeing more of him. I was like, okay, yeah, he you know he makes a little little funny faces. He seems really funny. You know, but then as as the season went on, you know, he just really didn't add anything to the show. Um, he, in he, in my opinion, I think he needs to get a little. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that I, I'm a better actor than he is or anything like that, but uh, I think he he should have some kind of kind of some kind of acting lessons, you know, some kind of coaching. Because I mean, I know he does improv and things like that, and, I, and I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure that that pretty much was his acting. You know, he he's had these classes, but it just seems like on television, it just seems like he just he has a heart. Like I don't know, it doesn't seem too natural to me. Like it seems like he's he's uh, you know, he's kind of weird with it. You know, he doesn't really uh, you know, like he like you know, like I don't know. It's just something. I mean, he doesn't seem natural on on, on camera, in my opinion. You know, maybe on stage and just doing improv and stuff like that. Maybe he's he's very good, but just him being on SNL, I just think that uh, I don't know. He he should stay. He definitely has to step his game up. Now I'm not saying that he's he's uh, you know, like he's 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 he actually makes me kind of miss Paul Britton a little bit. You know, I, I kind of miss like, dang, I wish Paul Britton was uh was still in the cast. You know, you know, because in my opinion, it seems like Tim Robinson just isn't like uh. I don't know. He just needs a lot of improvement. Um, I mean, he's good at doing little sight gag things where, you know, dress up like a woman and, and looking, you know, and making little weird faces and things like that. My, my favorite skit, though, that he did uh, was the um, was the one when Jennifer Lawrence hosted and and he was the, uh, you know, he was writing a letter saying, you know, take a picture of your boobs and send it. That was great, you know. Tim Robinson did his thing in that one, but um, and the and the Test Brothers was kind of funny, but it just I don't know, it's just something, it's just something about Tim Robinson that just is not gelling with me when I'm looking at him, you know. But moving right along, twelfth twelfth place, Vanessa Bayer. Vanessa Bayer just was just there this season. 
Um, you know, if, if she's not in, a, in, a, in a, if some, if, I guess if Taryn Killam doesn't put her in something, she's just she's just kind of there. And then when she does, you know, get to do things, she doesn't. Uh, I don't know. She just doesn't like. Uh, she just kind of stands there. You know, she doesn't really. She doesn't really. Uh, she doesn't really seem to do much. I did like her Miley Cyrus, uh, her updated Miley Cyrus skit. Um, what else did I like about her? Uh, it, I mean, there's a few things here and there, but it, overall, Vanessa Bayer, if, if Vanessa Bayer didn't come back next season, which I'm pretty sure she will since uh, a lot of people are leaving um, or getting ready to leave, you know, after the next season, uh, I think Vanessa Bayer is probably still going to be there. But I, it's just Vanessa, I don't know, she's just not, she's not cutting it to me, you know. Um, her first two seasons, she started out really strong in her first season, you know, but, uh, just moving forward, Vanessa Bayer just, I don't know, she's just there, you know, like I said, feel free to disagree with me. At number 11, I know you guys are definitely going to disagree with me with, on this one because he, because his last show <laughs> was pretty good. No, it's not Bill Hader, Fred Armisen. Fred Armisen goes at number 11. Um, ah, oh, my God. This was his one of his worst seasons. Um, the, the Ben Affleck episode was one of his best, though. Not, well, I didn't say one of his best throughout the whole, his whole entire career on SNL. But, uh, but it was, you know, one of his best this season, the Ben Affleck episode. And, uh, you know, I think he did a few things. Like the Roger Brush in the Seth MacFarlane one, that was pretty good. But it's just that, Seth, I mean, Fred... He's just, he's just been he was just he's just been stale this season, you know. Uh, I mean, he doesn't really do. What he, I mean, I don't know. Like Fred, I mean, I mean, I know some people got mad at me when I talked about him leaving, you know, and I, I expressed my opinion about him. Um, it's just that Fred, uh, he's a good performer. He's very funny. I like him. I mean, I actually like Fred. But this is, just, I mean, I'm just going to call a spade a spade here. His last season wasn't that good. I mean, let's just keep it real. <laughs> you know, there's nothing, it's not any kind of Fred hate or anything like nothing personal. It's just that, you know, this his last season was just he didn't go out with a bang. Well, he went out on a bang on the on the Ben Affleck episode, but just his whole entire season, it's just oh my god, he just didn't he didn't do it. He didn't he didn't he didn't bring it. You know, and I'm actually glad that he's leaving. Um, you know, I think he should have actually left around the time when Will Forte left. Because, uh, but I guess then again he couldn't because he was doing Obama before Jay took over. Uh, but I, I think that would probably, if he didn't do Obama, if he just would have left around the time or maybe a season after or a season before Will Forte, that probably would have been good. And I probably would have been saying Fred Armisen was one of the great. I didn't say one of the greatest, but I would have been saying a lot of good things about Fred Armisen. Like, oh, I miss him. Fred Armisen did a lot of great things. If they had Fred Armisen in this skit, he probably would have been, did well in it. <laughs> you know, but he just he really just kind of overstayed, in my opinion. Um, at number ten, Nassim Pedrad. Nassim Pedrad goes at number ten, basically for not really doing much this season she didn't do anything she just wasn't in any skits uh i mean it would it, i mean it, it, it'd it be like whole shows go by and i seem didn't get anything to do you know uh but every time she did every time she was on camera she did you know have a solid performance but just not you know solid enough to make up for her you know la her absence you know it's kind of like oh well that was good or that eh, that was funny but just you know if you're going to be in one skit every four shows and at least go out at least let that be the like a classic you know not just something that just oh that was good oh that's cute oh that's funny yeah well well oh well you know and that's kind of how i felt about uh not seeing overall in this season at number nine and i know a lot of y'all would probably want this person to go lower you know on the list well i, I, well, I don't know go go uh, <laughs> uh not be ranked so high um but in my opinion this person really shine and i had low expectations for this person when they first uh joined the cast but i i really feel that you know moving forward that this person is going to end up being uh you know a, a heavy hitter and especially the heavy part her name is ad bryant at number nine ad bryant uh, she did her thing. She had a little bit like, okay, this kind of like the thing about Nassim. Nassim had little bit roles, little small little things here and there, but she really didn't kill it. 80 on the other hand, 
she had a lot of little, like a lot of little roles that just added up, in my opinion, that, that she just performed. And even when she didn't have eighty, even when she didn't have any speaking roles, like her just moving around and making gestures and things like that, and and thing, like it was funny. Eighty really, uh, eighty really held it down. I mean, she really, I don't say held it down, but she, I, I got to change that. And I held it down, but she really, uh, she really, like, you know. I guess pulled her weight, you know, uh, you know, uh, this season. Um, what else? It just 80 really, I mean, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by 80, you know? Um, I, I really am. I really am. I know a lot of people got on me about, uh, doing that little, uh, the thing that I did, uh, when I kind of judged the featured cast members before they actually, uh, joined. When I just kind of read little blurbs on them on blogs and kind of made, posted my opinions, especially about 80 being a, you know, the first bona fide, heavy set woman in the cast and that like i said her being a heavy set woman that doesn't take anything away from her talent i was just kind of calling a spade a spade i was just stating the obvious uh you know because melissa mccarthy she's a big girl and she is very she is funny she's very funny i i mean melissa mccarthy i'm a huge fan of hers i want I'm, I'm i haven't seen the heat yet i'm definitely going to see it and uh and I, I'm, I'm 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 you know i'm proud of i'm proud of 80 you know i hope 80 actually uh you know, becomes a heavy hitter in the cast moving forward, you know, if she returns. I, and I, I have a strong feeling she's returning next season. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody's getting the axe, including Tim Robinson. I think Tim Robinson is coming back too. Uh, but yeah, I want to say more things about 80, but I, I should have wrote more notes, I, you know. But anyway, moving right along, at the eighth spot, I know this is another person that you don't think should be here. I know a lot of you are going to disagree. Um, and a lot of you just, a lot of you guys just flat out don't like him. Um, but I, I, I like this person, Jay Farrow at number eight. Uh, Jay Farrow, uh, you know, he, he's very good at impersonations. He's improved in as far as his non impersonations. Um, because I remember, I remember saying earlier in, in, in another podcast that it seems like Jay Farrow just cannot play a normal guy for for the save his life. He has to be doing some kind of impersonation or some kind of character based on an impersonation. Like he just can't do just a a guy, you know, or he can't do man number two, or he can't do man number two without being kind of you know kind of you know urban, you know, or kind of ghetto, and you know he can't like he just has to be either just the urban ghetto kind of guy, or he has to be just some unnatural guy on stage if he's not doing an impersonation. You know, and um, but throughout the season, he's, he's kind of grown and he's kind of gotten better at that. So, uh, and, and I, I have faith in Jay Farrow. I think he just needs coaching. I think he just needs, uh, you know, I mean, like Tim Robbins. I think Tim Robbins can be. I think he could be decent. You know, if he had, just, I guess, some more schooling, some more coaching, because I think Tim, I think he has, like Tim Robbins, he has potential, but I don't think he has it. And that, but that's just my opinion. It's based on what little I've seen on him. You know. Jay Farrell, I feel the same way. I feel like Jay Farrell, ha he has it, but he just needs to be molded. He just needs to be polished up a little more, you know? And another thing I want to say about Jay Farrell is, I hate to say it, he's not, you know, he's one of those guys, like, he's kind of like, well, I, I, I don't know, Frank Caliendo, I, I, nah, Frank Caliendo is kind of, is, is kind of funny. But it's like, uh, I want to say Jay Moore, for instance. Jay Moore is very good at doing impersonations, but that's not really his whole act, though. He does, like, tell, he does tell jokes and talks about things and has stories. And he, I mean, Jay, Jay Moore can really flip it up. But uh, Jay Moore, he's very good at impersonations, but what makes it, not only that he's accurate with his impersonations, he's funny. He's funny. Like, okay, like, what's that guy that used to be on Mad TV, like, in the first, I guess, the second season? He's like a Hispanic guy, and he does impersonations. Uh, Pablo Francisco. Yeah, Pablo Francisco. Like, Pablo Francisco kind of reminds me of Jay Farrow. Like, they're not, they just do voices and do impersonations and do characters. Very, they do, uh, well, from Pablo Francisco, excuse me, I'm messing his name up. Pablo Francisco is very good at doing impersonations. But he's not that like he's not that funny to me. It's, it's just the thing that makes him funny is that, or the thing that makes him good is that he does accurate impersonations, or he does very good like his voices. He can switch his voice up and it's pretty good, you know. But he's just not that. 
you know, he's not like he's just not funny. And, and Jay Farrell's kind of like that to me too, where he does very accurate impersonations. He's spot on. They sound good, and you're like, wow, he's talented. He can mimic all these people, but he's just not. He's not like he, he's not funny with it though. He should find a way to. He should find a way. Like he should find a way to take his impersonations and make jo and tell jokes. Like he's missing the joke aspect of what he's doing, you know. Um, you can't just do an accurate impersonation of uh, of Denzel and then not make him funny either. You know, you, it's a comedy show. You got to you got to be funny too, Jay Farrell. And you're a stand up, you know. On top of that, um, so yeah, that's what I say about Jay Farrell. Overall, I think he's great. I you know, he, I think he he has the potential to be one of the bigger stars on SNL if he just he, if somebody just kind of coaches him, polishes him up. I think he needs to form an alliance with Taron Killam next season. I think him and Taron Killam need to buddy up in a lot of skits. Uh just like him and Vanessa just how uh Taron and Vanessa does. And, and, and now kind of Taron and Bobby kind of team up like that too. Uh you know, Jay Farrell and Taron Killam, they need to shake each other's hand and start doing they need to I think I think if they did that, uh that would really help Jay Farrell out, you know. But who knows? I don't know where that's going. At number seven, Bobby Moynihan. Bobby Moynihan. This has been one of Bobby Moynihan's best seasons. Uh, because Bobby Moynihan, I kind of felt like, eh, I don't really like this guy. He's not that. He's okay. But, uh, you know, I kind of kind of saw him as like a, a I was going to say kind of a, a heavy set Chris Parnell. But, uh, but actually, Chris Parnell, he actually, uh, he's more of a straight man. Um, and plus Chris Parnell, I don't know, Chris Parnell kind of adds more to a scene than Bobby does sometimes. Sometimes Bobby, his, his, his only role in a skit is just to be fat. You know what I'm saying? Like it, they, they just put him, they just, okay, you're the fat guy, go. You know, that, that's kind of some, sometimes what they do. You know, it seems like Bobby Moynihan, you know, he just kind of plays the, you know, he, like he said in his Howard Stern interview, I just play shapes. You know what I'm saying? But he he's funny though. He is he is funny and he has improved. Um you know, I think this is he he's he's definitely he's definitely improved, you know. Um you know. He's definitely improved. Uh what else would I like to say about him? His Janet his Janet Peckinpah character, he needs to definitely walk that out a couple more times. I definitely I'm definitely feeling that. Um you know. The Janet Peckinpah. Let's see. Moving right along. Um, I wanted to say more things about Bobby. Like I said, I should have wrote better notes. Um, okay. Number six. Okay, now we're going to do the top six. And uh, <laughs> I know you guys may disagree with a lot of things I'm about to say. But uh, I'm just going ahead and keep it real. At number six, Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon definitely deserves the number six spot. She, uh, I mean, she, she's, uh, you know, a lot of people want to say she's like Kristen Wiig 2.0, but I think, uh, Kate McKinnon is definitely her own person, you know, um, yeah, Kate McKinnon, uh, she, her Ellen's good, her, uh, her impersonation is good, her characters are good, her voices are good, she always, like, she, she still sings, man, you know, she does it, I mean, Kate McKinnon, I think she's going to end up being one of the she want she's going to end up being one of the uh, the heavy hitters next season, you know. Um, and actually, I'm gonna cut the podcast off right here at the number six spot, Kate McKinnon. I am going to do the top five, but I'm going to save that for the uh, next podcast. Um, but also, before I wrap this up, I want to give another shout out to ACM Records. Definitely check out their music, check out their artists, check out their bands, check them out. They're they're great. Um, and, uh, like I said, I'll put the, the link in the information box below. That's all I'd like to say. I'm just some guy named Jay. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.